but it's too dark here so I can change the chrominance over here a little bit so if I have this red color over the green color I have a good contrast over this red one okay red always go well with green okay uh, just go to the nature if you have a forest and you see a red uh, flower you go <laughs> you go to take this flower that's the, the basis of the nature okay? I agree okay uh, or a yellow one or an orange one we have complementary colors to help us but the, the, the main different color is the red one here. so I have a great contrast here uh, so my composition my text is following a, a rule of design that elements uh, with the same uh, information should be near each other and they should be aligned uh, to each other so I can align this in the middle okay no problem I can align it on the right or on the left or on the right I can't have or I can have to oh, no problem uh, we can break all the rules okay breaking all the rules but if I align it on the right or on the left it should be better in this case I should align it on the right because I want to to, to have uh, uh, all the focus on the left to be a soccer player so I have a composition here that I have the soccer player over the uh, golden areas of my picture of my uh, ads for example I have the title over uh, another uh, golden area okay and a subtitle that have a good contrast of size that is a size contrast okay I have the title with one size and half of this size I have the subtitle so I have a size contrast it's good for reading for example so it's a design concept so okay I have the, those uh, elements here uh, and here we have seen i'm going to stop talking about inkscape right now because i want you to uh, to try to memorize this and try to practice this i'm going to go uh, to talk about it in a few minutes but uh, just for reviewing we we saw here how to drag our documents how to drag guides okay how to create guides with extensions handler okay uh, uh, guides creator and I have chosen uh, uh, rule of the thirds so Xscape creates for me the right guides for my documents and it divides it in three vertical and three horizontal horizontal areas uh, so we have created using this tool, this extension. It comes uh, by the full in Inkscape. We have used the uh, import uh, the import uh, bitmap image inside of the document. Okay, do you want to ask something? Yeah, Francis has a question. Francis, can you unmute and ask him your question, please? Okay, thank. Uh, ask it. Thank you um, for the opportunity. Uh, you just shared the color wheel with us, and I thought it was intriguing the way you were selecting your colors. Okay, do, I, do, do you want that I repeat this the process? <laughs> yes, would you okay. please? Oh, of course I can. I'm going to duplicate Thank you. this. Okay, you are welcome, ever. Okay. Um, uh, I duplicate the object, the text object, with Ctrl D. Okay. Now I'm going to use the dropper just to catch the background color. Okay. With the object selected, I'm going here. I take the dropper tool and I click 
over the color I want to, to change. Uh -huh. By doing this, okay. okay. By doing this, uh, I just uh, put the background color over the text color. Okay. I'm going to select the arrow tool here again, and over here, over the wheel color tool, I can see using this wheel um, all the the rules of colors are here. You know, this is very a very nice tool in every kind of software. Photoshop has this tool, Illustrator, CorelDRAW, uh, the the old the freehand had this one, Corel Photo Paint, Painter, you know. Uh, so uh, this wheel color help us to find, for example, complementary colors, okay, and uh, many combinations that we, we can use for our uh, main color. For example, uh, I can. I'm going to duplicate this again. Okay. Uh, yeah, your primary colors on the wheel. Yes. Um, it's it's confusing to the naked eye or untrained person. I have no uh, art experience. Uh, to use variegated colors and to know whether it would co be complementary, is there a rule of thumb yes. <laughs> when you're using the? Um, color wheel okay. what colors complement each other or the opposite on the wheel or next to each other yes uh, I, I'm going to explain this for you now thank uh, you for example okay for illustration I'm going to open another software called a gauge I'm going to see if it's uh, can you see this this other software yes, open? yes. Mm -hmm. okay so a gauge uh, Agav, it's a software that I can choose these colors for a project, for example. Uh, I have selected from my screen this color. And here it shows to me uh, complementary colors, triads, tetrads, analogs, monochromatic colors. So it's uh, handy to have this kind of software installed. So it gives me all the all the colors that I need for creating any kind of uh, work. Uh, but let's say that I don't have this. The 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 most important colors and basically the basic colors that I, I I must work are the monochromatic colors. Okay, that's here in Inkscape in this color wheel are inside of this triangle here. So I have all monochromatic, okay, inside of here. But if I want complementary colors, complementary colors are colors that have good contrast between them. So the complementary colors are on the basis of my triangle. So in this case, the triangle is pointed to this uh, blue color here. Inside of the triangle, I have all monochromatic variations. Okay, I have uh, chrominance and luminance here inside. If I drag the color into this this white circle here, I play with the monochromatic variations of the main color. Okay, uh, and all of these colors inside of this triangle represents all variations. I can use for monochromatic uh, design, for example. Okay, I can play inside of this triangle for this. And outside of the triangle, in this case here, okay, in this case here, uh, exactly uh, opposite, opposing with the point of the triangle, I have my. Um, my com complementary color or I have the best colors that I can use to contrast with the, this one in the, in the points of the triangle okay so all of these colors here can contrast with the green one here okay hey Ricardo or, what um 
I would like to wrap it up for 8 p.m. So if you want to go through GIMP next time, that's fine. We can continue with the escape until the, until the top of the hour, and then we'll do a separate broadcast for GIMP. Does that sound good? Oh, I think that's a good idea. Where is Ricardo? Did we lose him? I think his screen froze. Uh-oh. Wait, hold on. I'm going to pause the recording here while we get him back. Was there, I talked about it. Yeah, well, I'm resuming since everyone's talking. Um, is I guess he's not he dropped off. He must be having technical difficulties. Yeah, he just responded. He said, uh, hey, guys. Hey. He's back. He's back. Oh, right on, Ricardo. Yeah, he's, uh, he's back. Woo! Welcome back. <laughs> Anyway, I was just Yay! saying, you know, if you wanted to wrap up with Inkscape tonight, we can do the GIMP broadcast next week if you wanted to. Okay, okay, if you want to. to yeah, because we got some stuff to do at, at the top of the hour, so just continue with Inkscape for another 15 minutes. We'll get questions and answers uh, okay. for the last 5 or 10 minutes, and then we'll wrap <laughs> yes, up. Yes, okay? yes. I think we, we must go on fast because... We have a blackout here in Portugal. I don't know why. That's my uh, why you got disconnected, my friend. Okay, cool. All right, okay. continue on then, brother. Go for it. Okay. Your color wheel is inspiring. Well, I'm going to share the screen again. I'm going to talk again about this. Thank That's you. Cool. Thanks, man. Man, yeah. Sorry about the blackout, guys. That's, no, that's fine. I just paused the recording and resumed it. <laughs> We're all good. So, um, we have here uh, uh, this opposite color. That's my best contrast color. And over the basis of the triangle, I have all the colors that can be uh, good colors for the, to contrast with the main color. Okay. So if I take the Oh, did we lose him again? <sighs> yeah, we did. Okay, man, Yay! let's try this again. Welcome We're back. <laughs> Welcome sorry, back. Sorry, sorry. Oh man, it's it's shit happens. It's technology, man. You can't do anything about it. Yeah. You gotta sorry, roll with the punches, man. brother. You should have seen me yesterday. I was uh, getting quite frustrated because I had some Camtasia stuff that wasn't working properly. And then I just had to do a bunch of renaming the files and stuff because it doesn't play MOV. It only we lost Ricardo again. No, okay, he's here. I'm, I'm, I'm here again. <laughs> I came back again. He's here. Oh, there you are. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I don't know what's happening here in the city. But the no, city. we lost Leon. The, no, Leon's here. Everyone's still here, Fran. Okay, I'm going to be faster. So, it's okay. the back on comes again I finished the, the subject okay it's all good buddy <laughs> share the screen <laughs> yes. uh, okay so let's go cool. so finishing this part of colors uh, all of those part three <laughs> yes. okay part three of colors uh, I have this and if I come if I go back to the main color I have those two other points of the triangle that are the colors that are um, analog colors they how can i say this if you have to use a close for example those colors would combine well with the first one so if i click here i have a nice color to combine with this green one if I go here too okay so we have complementary colors and we have analog colors so this is the uh, one rule of colors that's very important and the color will help us to find these colors okay so this is the end of colors uh, for today okay any thank questions? you so much that was we're gonna do a quick 10 minute session of questions and answers okay. um, and we're gonna wrap it up so if anyone has any questions for Ricardo ask him now 
and uh, he can go through a few more things with Inkscape if you guys want. So if you have any any questions, ask him. I can see, I think we talked about this before, Ricardo, white and green look good together, white and black, I think, uh, white and blue. It seems white complements a lot of things. It's also, mm -hmm. uh, what was that website you showed that you can combine two different color, you can know if the fonts and the colors are gonna work together? Uh, I didn't understand the question, what? There was a website you showed us to see yeah. if font types and colors look good together. Yes, yes, uh, uh, we, uh, for example, for fonts, uh, a rule that's very important is that a document, a design, should not have more than three fonts. So we have some websites that helps us uh, to find font combinations. There are many of them. Uh, so if you do not have time for studying a design, uh, you can use those websites to find in this as websites for color combinations too. For example, Adobe has a nice one site for color combinations. Uh, I don't remember the name right now, but I can do, uh, I can uh, separate those web links and send to Chris and Karim and they pub pub publicize this for you later. Uh, so for font combinations uh, uh, and for color combinations, we have many websites that help us with this. Uh, 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 here in Linux, I use uh, another tool called Agave or Agave. I don't know the, the right pronunciation. That's a tool. That's an offline tool that creates for me uh, those combinations. Uh, I think that. <laughs> There should be many other tools, uh, offline tools for that too. Okay, uh, so I can I can do my homework and send you later a bunch of a lot of uh, lists of those websites. Okay, sounds good to me. Okay. What about uh, you, Tom? If you want to meet uh, Tom Clark or Carl or Sharon. What do you guys think? Comments, questions, ideas, input? What's on your mind, Fran? What do you think, Carl? Well, it looks like it's something that would come in very handy for me. Uh, you know, making up banners and putting uh, links in there. That's what I do a lot now. I, I'm a banner or something that, that pertains to whatever I'm doing for business. And mm -hmm. uh, I'm in there and I use, what is it, Re Rebit? Rebit, I think it is. Where you go in there and you can actually put in uh, links and pictures. Carl, this we're getting a lot of feedback from your background noise. Yeah. Don't know why, it's just an air conditioner. No, I hear like a television or a radio. That's what I hear. Anyway. And that's a lag too. I lost a lot of words. Go ahead. Yes, uh, thank you. Or whoever. Thank you. It's Bram. I'm muted or unmuted? You're unmuted. Okay. Thank you so much for the explanation of the color wheel, Ricardo. I okay. really appreciated that. Okay. And the, that. the the demonstration tonight was spot on, and it was very informative. Okay. Appreciate you being with us. Yeah. Thanks a lot, Ricardo. Really appreciate uh -oh. your time. Um, that's going to do it for tonight, everybody. I want to thank our good friend, Mr. Ricardo, for doing this presentation for us. It's been very, very awesome. And he's going to come back next week uh, yes. with Inkscape Part 2, kind of elaborate a little bit more, okay. and then he's going to get into GIMP, which is yes. another photo editing program, which is really cool as well. Is that correct? Yes, that's it. Okay. Was uh, there anything and you were going to talk about next week? Yes, we can talk okay. about this and later about Blender. Right on. 
All right, so I want to thank everyone for being here tonight, and we will see you on Saturday night. Join us for the Entrepreneur Power Hour Saturday Night Personal Development Mastermind. We're going to be listening at, to Think and Grow Rich, Chapter 10, The Power of the Mastermind, and then we're going to be discussing what we interpreted in the chapter, how Think and Grow Rich has helped us, and things like that individually. So join us Saturday night. That gets going at 7 p.m. Eastern Time. 6 p.m. Central, and we'll see you guys on Saturday. Bye-bye. Bye.